Okay, so this year I'm hoping to become less inactive on my YouTube channel and I want to document more sewing projects because that's kind of fun and I enjoy watching others. So this is going to be one of my vintage sewing projects, but I'm quite indecisive on what my next one will be. I've had a look through this book here, which is very lovely, I found it on Amazon. So I've had a couple of ideas, I really want to make a cute little printed summer dress like this one here. I really like this print, I also really like this here, this kind of shape. And I did want to make it in this cute floral pattern, but then I put it here and thought wouldn't it look nice in a really deep red taffeta? That's an idea, I'll probably end up doing that because that's so cute and I'm a sucker for a red dress and I'm getting major Peggy Carter vibes on that. Or, I've already made this blouse here from a blue satin which I really liked but I really want to make a pair of these trousers in a green colour to match this blouse here. I thought the green would go really nice with this because it has green leaves here. Maybe I should just do both in one video and do an Angela Clayton style video who I love. <laughs> here is the fabric that I will be using. It is a lovely wine coloured taffeta and it's not too thin and it's not too thick so it's going to have quite a nice weight to it I think. So as you can see the dress calls for around 2 metres of fabric which is what I have. I am slightly smaller than a size 6 because I am a size 4 but that's easy to alter for me. If you're not too great with following patterns and you want something simple to practice on, I recommend this one because it's quite straightforward. And if you've always struggled with reading patterns, this one is not too bad because I used to always struggle reading them. So I'm always happy to let others know when I found a really simple pattern to follow. These are the pieces that I will be cutting, but I may add some space in between the sleeve here to make it a bit more puffed. And I may also add a bit more to the skirt so it comes out a little bit here. I'm not sure because I think if I make this skirt a bit bigger it might look a bit too 1950s. I'm trying to keep to a 1940s silhouette for this. Then I got straight in and started cutting out my pattern pieces. And I cut to a size 6 but I will let you all know that I do not use a seam allowance on these pieces because I am a size 4 and a size 6 is just a little bit too big for me. I cut these pieces out of lining and of course my main fabric. Although the skirt did not have a lining, only the bodice. Does anyone else think I kind of look like E.T. here? So all of the pieces have been cut. I am now going to press them and interface the middle sections and the little shoulder piece and then we can get to sewing. Yay! So it is 10 a.m. right now and I'm hoping we can make this a one day make. So how perfectly does my nail polish match this dress? So fingers crossed that can happen. <laughs> if by the end of this video it hasn't taken one day, it doesn't matter, but I'm hoping it will. So following the pattern's instructions, I'm going to be gathering the bust here and the shoulders on these pieces of the bodice. And this is achieved by using the widest stitch length and widest stitch width on your machine. And then you kind of just pull the threads from each end and it should gather. It. The armholes look a bit funny at the moment, but they're going to be probably cut a bit lower during fitting. Here I am sewing the two bust pieces together with a small stitch down the front. Then I pin my bust cups to the midriff section. I don't really have good names for these pieces, but I think you can see what I'm doing here. It is really hard to get this point perfectly in the centre, I will say that. It took some manoeuvring and repinning, and I still think it's a little tiny bit off centre, but I tried my best. <laughs> and here was the finished result. A tip to let out the tension at the point is to snip the corners, as you see here. Then I gathered the bottom of my back pieces and sewed the front pieces to the back. So this is my bodice so far and I've just realised that this piece here was interfaced on the wrong side. So I will take this off and repress it and be right back. I'm going to sew these sections in place and then sew the front and back sides together and then see if I need to do any alterations in a fitting. Most of my time sewing I spend trying to get Lily not to sleep on all of my pieces whilst I'm working on them. I like how she's very content and just... She, she doesn't give a damn. So I've just put the bodice on my mannequin and I'm quite liking this kit. As I said, I have to alter the armholes to be a bit wider. I have to take in quite a bit on the shoulders. 
I haven't sewn the seams on the side yet because obviously I wanted to see if the fit was right and I just want to bring this in just a touch so it's nice and figure hugging on the waist and the back looks pretty good too. Here I am sewing the side seams together on the bodice on both sides. All of the top pieces have been sewn to the midriff pieces including the back as you can see here. Now the edges can be left raw because there will be a lining. Here I am pinning and putting together the small tabs that will pull in the bust cups. Then I gathered the head of the sleeves and here's some sweet machine gathering footage. I do love to gather by machine and pulling it through. It's quite satisfying for me, so I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> I find joy in small sewing things, okay? And then I sewed up the side seams on the sleeves. And here I am installing one of the sleeves into the bodice. And this process can be very frustrating, so don't worry about that. It's difficult for a lot of us. So this is where we're at right now. It's all looking a bit uneven still. I mean, these parts here are just pinned in. Um, the sleeve I set in and it's looking big and voluminous, so I like that. So the dress looks a bit awkward on the mannequin before you kind of pull this part in. <laughs> So that fixed it up a lot for me. Alrighty, so there has been a grave discovery and that is that the zipper that I ordered <laughs> is too short. Like, much too short. I don't know what happened. And it's so sad because it's a hidden zipper, it's a perfect colour match near enough. But it's too short, I'm so annoyed. I feel like I always seem to make my worst mistakes when I'm filming the process. But you know what? I'm okay with that because not everything that you will make will go smoothly and end up perfect. Sometimes <laughs> you make really silly errors like this. I have dyscalculia so I think I must have gotten mixed up with 22 inches and 22 centimeters. Sometimes that happens. Usually I check them before I order again just in case but I didn't with this one and I have. And obviously have learned from my mistakes. Now, I could make this in one day with a different zipper, or I could wait and order a replacement one of this that is longer. But I really don't want to make any other orders right now. The only zipper I could find was this chunky black one that I got given by my university tutor. And it's the right length, but it just... <sighs> I don't like it. I mean, it could be like a statement feature, or it could be really ugly and make the dress look horrible. Well, I'll make a decision on it and be right back. Okay, so I have pinned the black zipper in and pressed this seam down. I think I may be able to conceal it quite a bit, so it looks it looks quite presentable. I don't think it looks too bad, so it won't bring the dress down too much. But I am still sad about not using this one. I mean, I can always find a use for this, and I'm glad to find a use for this one because it was quite hard to find a use for it being so long and chunky. But yes, not my original plan, but you make do and use what you have. Here I have sewn the bodice lining together and I'm sewing the side pieces to the front. This was the exact same process as creating the main bodice. Then I laid the lining bodice over the main bodice just to check that everything lined up perfectly and no alterations had to be made. And here I am I think installing one of the sleeves. I can't exactly tell and it's been about a week since I filmed this. <laughs> But I think that's what I'm doing. So I am adding the lining now to the bodice. And I'm doing this by having the wrong side of the lining fabric over the right side of the front fabric. Then I will be sewing down this line here along the edge at the top of the bodice. And then it will be flipped over, pressed. Then I will probably be slip stitching the sleeve hems to the main sleeves. And I will be overlocking the bottom of the lining and the front fabric. So I'll update you once I've sewn this line. Here are the edges flipped and now I will be pressing it. The lining is in and it looks quite pretty. I'm quite impressed with this one. And a useful tip for those at home. After you've sewn the line at the top before you've pressed it over. Just make small snips here. Here. And sort of in this area around here as it's curving as you can see here and it also lets out the tension in these seams so that it as i say molds better when you fold it over and i did say i was going to slip stitch it but i've actually got it on the machine on it it doesn't look too bad it but it's a one day make it's fine it'll do so i've had a play around with the bodice and pulled it into what it should look like over here 
This obviously is looking a bit weird because it needs to be pulled in. But wow, I love the gathers and how this came out with this little... I'm going to call it a tab. <laughs> I know that the white overlocking thread just looks so ugly with this lovely colour and it should have been red or black. But it's the only one I have up here with me right now. And we're almost done. Here I am pinning the skirt to the bodice. I have already sewn both side seams of the skirts, pressed them open and overlocked any raw edges. Then I sewed the skirt to the bodice, making sure that my side seams of my skirt of course match the side seams of my bodice. When I got to the end, I folded the back seam of the skirt over just a little bit on top of the zip and then I top stitched my zipper in place. As you can see, the zip is sandwiched between the lining and the main fabric of the bodice. The dress is completely finished for the hem, which I will do next. <laughs> this has actually been a 1.5 day make. Still, I feel very accomplished for making this whole thing in such a quick time. I marked how long I wanted my hem to be by going from the bottom of the skirt and measuring up and using a tailor's chalk to mark in the measurement. There are many different ways that you can hem a skirt and hemming a skirt is actually one of the most difficult things you can do, especially a circle skirt. It is an area that I'm still learning in, so I am still figuring out the best way for myself to hem my skirts. If you have a way that you've found that has helped you in this process, do let me know because I would like to try it out. After this, I left a tiny amount of space beyond the line that I'd marked and cut the excess fabric off of the bottom of my skirt. Here is what it looked like after being pressed. I folded any raw edges down and pinned the hem in place and then machine stitched it. After this it was time to add my own personal clothing tag and the dress was done. I should have pressed it before I did a try on but I was too excited and just got my camera out anyway. I'm totally not doing the dress justice in these clips but still I'm very fond of how this dress turned out after being just a one and a half day make. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.